Hello folks and welcome. So I have a fairly basic video for you today for new users. So this uh, is targeted toward new users. I do have some more advanced materials uh, if you are looking for the same material on my YouTube site because uh, my library is over a hundred videos. But anyways, Linux Mint 21.1 Cinnamon. I'm going to be talking about very simple tools today. How to format USB sticks, what kind of uh, formatting should you use, and uh, how to burn an ISO image, a computer image that you downloaded from one of the developer sites. And I'll use Linux Mint as the example. So this is the Cinnamon desktop. In either case, folks, welcome. Uh, none of my videos on my new YouTube channel are under two minutes, but they all have chapters and timelines on these videos. And I'm filming in 4K today, so you can adjust your player using that gear symbol on your player if that's not to your appropriate screen resolution. So my YouTube site contains over 100 videos, so if you want some more advanced subjects, you can uh, click um, and investigate my um, community tab. It'll show you how to do keyword searches. I also encourage that you read my about section also. And again, one more time, welcome. So let's talk about some tools today. I'm going to talk about USB, stick formatter and image writer. These tools are very simple to use. Uh, has three boxes on the formatter and on the image writer. USB again, you just put that in the search field and you'll find them immediately. It has two boxes. Very simple tools. I'll first start with the stick formatter. But I'm going to open up the file manager and this is Nemo, your file manager. You can resize your icons on the fly. If you watch my other videos on the file manager, you'll probably know what I'm doing right now. So let me talk about devices. What's a device in Linux Mint? Well, the device is either an internal hard drive or an external hard drive or USB stick or another name for that is thumb drive. I have all of those. So let me talk about at least the symbols. I'm not going to click on my internal hard drives. That's a symbol for a spinning hard drive mounted internally. That is a symbol for a solid state drive, a regular standard SATA serial ATA solid state drive. So is that one. This one is an NVMe solid state drive. It kind of looks like a, if you want to call it a, a, a stick that uh, has a hard drive on it, on a stick. It's usually mounted on the bottom of your motherboards. It's a little bit more advanced than the standard solid state drives. It's solid state nonetheless, and it has the same symbol. So both of these are spinning hard drives, and these three are standard solid state drives as far as the definition is concerned. These, on the other hand, that's a symbol for a USB stick, and it's pretty self-evident. This one, on the other hand, confuses people. My USB-based hard drive is a solid state drive mounted in an enclosure connected to a USB 3 cable. It gives me a no symbol. Uh, don't ask me why that was picked, but that's not something I did. I picked. However, if I were to substitute this same drive in that same enclosure with a spinning hard drive, that symbol will change. Hopefully that's clear. Either way, this is a stick and this is a regular solid state USB connected hard drive. So far, so good. Okay, no files. We're gonna format those first though. USB is what you just need to type in as soon as you open up your Mint menu. So we're gonna deal with the stick formatter first. So the stick formatter is not only the stick, but I can also format the hard drive. The PNY is the manufacturer, CS900 is the model number, the 240 is the size in gigabytes. SSD means solid state drives. Forget about the stuff in the brackets. So that's a 240, and that's a 16 gig standard USB stick. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to physically turn off the USB connected drive. So when I click that, now I only have one choice. Okay, if that stuff, if, that, if multiple devices confuse you, unplug them, turn them off, whatever. Because USB devices, you can unplug rather quickly. Mine just happened to have one of those power buttons on them where I can just turn it off. All right, let's move on to the next box. I'm going to pick the USB stick, and the next item is what is this thing? If you have never dealt with this, FAT32 stands for File Allocation Table 32, and it is the default 
which is compatible everywhere. That would mean Linux, Microsoft Windows, and of course Apple Macs. The XFAT is the next one in line, not as compatible. And the two differences on the FAT32 XFAT is the uh, FAT32 cannot handle single files larger than four gigabytes. I'm gonna give you an example. I have over 100 videos on my YouTube site. My longest one is 50 minutes, 50 some odd minutes. It's still less than four gigabytes. Just to give you an example of file sizes. So your FAT32 is probably the most compatible for usage. I don't need to deal with permissions because FAT32 doesn't have permissions either. Unlike the last one, which is extension four. If you format that with extension four, you will have to deal with permissions. Most of the time when uh, you format with extension four, it takes on the ownership of root. Then you'll have to deal with file permissions. This, the uh, one in the uh, third one down is NT file system or NTFS. It's uh, for mostly for Windows and, and Linux. It says it's not compatible with Mac, but I have used uh, NTFS, uh, been able to view NTFS on a Mac before. It just depends on which version of Mac. All right, with that said, FAT32 is probably your most compatible. And again, they don't, you don't need to deal with permissions and you can view them on Linux, Macs, and Microsoft. Now, the next one in line is the stick label. Now you notice there's a space in here. If you uh, continue watching my videos, and I do encourage that you subscribe, you will see some more of my advanced videos where I get into script files for backups. And the reason I don't recommend spaces in there is because when you're writing scripts, for instance, in the more advanced videos as you progress with Linux, um, it becomes a little bit more cumbersome to deal with the volume label with spaces in them. So my suggestion is actually change that every time you format these things to something simple. But then again, this is up to you. So what I'm gonna also point out is uh, this particular tool in this distribution doesn't care if you, it's capital or I'm sorry, your uh, caps lock key or, or uh, are, is on or off. You see this down here? I, some of my other videos, I explain what that tool does. Every time I depress my caps lock key, this thing lights up. So basically right now it's in caps mode. So I'm gonna type the word USB in here and then I'm gonna turn my caps lock key off. You can see that right there and type USB again. And there's no change in the case size. They're both uppercase letters. So that's what I'm getting at about this particular utility. It only types in uppercase letters. However, when you do this, I recommend no spaces, but give it at least a number. If you want to use USB 1 for your first device, what is the device again? A USB stick in this case, or a USB hard drive. So my USB 1 is a currently going to be a stick, and I'm going to have to click it. I got the stick, I got the FAT32, I got the label. I'm going to hit format. Now it's going to ask me for a password. If you're a restricted user, a standard user, um, you will have to have... Um, you know, the person that has the authority to format. And what I mean by that is if you create extra users on your system through this tool and you made them a standard user, that means they can't format, they can't install programs. It's good for kids, that kind of thing. All right, anyways, it formatted successfully. All right, now I can go over here and click that and it's ready for files. Let's turn on the other, let me turn on the other uh, USB hard drive that's connected here and it's going to auto mount and I can verify that it has no files on it. So I am going to reformat that also. USB stick formatter. Walk over to here. This time I'm going to select the 240 and I'm going to call this one uh, USB 4. It's whatever label you want to give it. Format, password, and authenticate. And this, uh, this is a uh, solid state hard drive connected to a USB. It should format rather quickly. If it's a spinning hard drive, it may take a little longer. In either case, they're both done. And now I can put files on them. Again, that's a no symbol. That's a solid state drive. If it was a spinning hard drive, then it'll have a symbol similar to that. So let me grab some things. I'll just grab two items and copy them. 
and dump them on both devices. They're just sample files, folks. I can, uh, I'll eliminate one of those on one just to give you the differences. Okay, now I'm gonna talk about uh, the other tool since that's pretty basic. So the other tool is called Image Writer. You just type in the same word, USB, Image Writer this time. So on ISO, that's an image for a computer image that you can burn onto not only USB sticks, but you can also burn those onto uh, DVDs. Where do you get these things called ISOs? All right, this is a Cinnamon desktop. I have a file that I downloaded for the XFCE desktop for Linux Mint from their website. It's, it's sitting in my download folder right here. It's 2.6 gigabytes with the file ending with .iso. So that's a computer image. I also recommend that you have one available if you're using a Cinnamon desktop that you have one of these at all times. Having an ISO, bootable ISO image on a USB stick or DVD is always advisable because they have tools on them like Time Shift to do system restores. They also have Gparted for resizing your hard drives. They also have a disk uh, or boot repair utility on that same image all right so how do we get this thing working well let's first talk about getting the image and i'm going to use linux mint as my guinea pig i'm just going to use distro watch so you go to linux mint's website and by the way you can get distro watch's link on my youtube site this is other linux images by the way and i'm just using mint as the example today so i'm going to go to mint's main website hit download walk over to the XFC, even though I'm using Cinnamon, I want to test out the uh, XFC for whatever reason. All right, it's 2.5 gigabytes and I scroll down and I see the word mirrors. If you're not sure what these words mean, it just means these are locations with the same copy of this XFCE edition of Linux Mint 21.1. I could have clicked the Cinnamon version and done the same thing. You pick whatever site is closest to you or just give it a try. There's plenty of these places. I'm gonna to go to Harvard. And as soon as I click that, it starts downloading, okay? So it'll say open when completed. I'm not gonna let it finish, but you can see the timelines is, is, is going down. It started out with X amount of minutes and depending on the connection speed, it'll just take X amount of minutes to download that 2.5 gigabytes. I'm not gonna let it finish though. I just wanted to give you the example of where to download something like that. Now that I have it already downloaded and it's sitting right here in my downloads folder, that's the image for the XFCE edition. Again, I also recommend that you always have, if you're running Cinnamon, to have a copy of it also. Because there are some tools on both of these that are valuable tools. All right, let's deal with this one more time. Go to your Mint menu and type in USB. Click on the image writer, ISO image, the computer image you just downloaded. Go find it in your download folder and click it and hit open. And then find your USB stick. I don't want the 240, I want the 16. Do I need any additional files off of that before I get going? So I would uh, investigate that first. So that's, I'm gonna not confuse myself, so I'm gonna eject the other one. Sure, whatever. And now the um, USB 4 is offline and I don't need these files here, but I could delete them or move them off to another device. Does that make sense? In other words, make sure it's clear. I could also reformat this to do the same thing with the other tool. All right, with all that stuff said, we have the image, we have the name of the image, and it's gonna be LM21.1XFCE. Now I have the stick and all I need to do is hit write. There's a verify in here, but you can hit right. Okay, so as soon as it, you click right, it's gonna ask you for that wonderful password again, and providing that your caps lock key is off, you should be able to type in your password without problems. However, if your caps lock key is on, you know, that's one of the reasons I have that tool there. All right, so I'm not gonna let this thing finish. I just wanted to let you see that it starts writing. Okay, and I'm gonna terminate this. But this process takes about 10 minutes, maybe 15, depending on the age of your machine. Okay, I'm gonna hit stop. 
and terminate that. And I want you to notice that it actually wrote some files already. It even says Linux Mint 21.1 XFCE on that thumb drive. And these are the files that are currently written to it. It just started writing the folders. So I terminated that. So basically this is a messed up drive. It's not finished. How do I clean this up? Well, you clean it up this way. Stick formatter tool, 16 gigabytes. Again, I'm not gonna use that label, but I will use that label. And password. And authenticate. And again, this normally takes about 10 seconds. And now that drive is clean. In other words, I, I cleaned up the, the USB stick. And I'm ready to redo this thing again if I wanted to. But an ISO image that is 2.6 gigabytes, you'll see some images. If you try other distributions, they may be all the way up to 4 gigabytes. I forgot what the last one that I saw that was really... I think I saw one over 5. I don't remember what the distribution was. But in essence, you're going to have these in various sizes is what I'm getting at. And it crams them onto these sticks. So what's the recommended size for something like that? A minimum of four gigabytes, obviously, for this device. If this is over four, then you'd need to move on to another USB stick that is eight gigabytes, for instance, because normally they come in four, eight, and sixteenths for your cheap USB 2. Does it have to be a USB 2 or 3? Not really. USB 2s are cheaper. However, does your computer handle USB 3 ports? Mine does, but maybe yours doesn't. So USB 3s would be a waste of money. USB 2s, on the other hand, are dirt cheap. You can almost pick them up at grocery stores. But if the image size that you downloaded that you want to burn onto these USB devices is bigger than 4, then you want to move to the next size up on the stick, which is an 8. Again, they go in 4, 8, and 16 as the most common flavors of USB sticks. Hopefully you found this information helpful. Take care, folks.